Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans number 72. I'm Fred Green. Today's guest has just returned from the World Golf Fitness Summit, and I wanted to get an update as to the future of golf fitness and get some tips for our off-season exercise as well. Mindy Boyson is a certified TPI fitness instructor, can be seen regularly on Golf America on Fox Sports Net, and has a series of videos called Fit for Golf, Fit for Life. Her website is fitforgolfusa.com. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Mindy. Thanks, Fred. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm very excited about having you. We've been talking for a long time. We've been communicating via email, and you sent me your three DVDs that I've been using. Thank you very much. Good. Good uh, for you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, but before we, we talk about the fitness and your DVDs and how important it is to golf, uh, you just returned from the World Golf Fitness Summit, and I would love to get a report from you on what it is and what went on. Okay. Well, first of all, it was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> more than I uh, ever imagined, actually. This was my first one, and I, um, I've i heard that it is the third annual, but what they're going to do is start having it every two years, and they're going to have um, the the world a different world conference every other year in between. So, so the next one will be in 2010, and we don't know where it will be. But Where was this one? The World Golf Summit this year was in Anaheim, right beside uh, Disneyland at the Convention Center. Okay, yeah, I know where that is. And how many people attend this? Well, um, at the very beginning, our keynote speaker, uh, well, Greg Rose, Dr. Greg Rose, who is one of the co-founders of um, TPI, which is Titleist Performance Institute, Mm -hmm. he ran this, this whole event, and it's sponsored by TPI, He stood up and told us that there were approximately uh, 400 people the first day and and then 450 the other three days uh, because the first day was dedicated just to those people who were certified uh, through TPI. So I think we had about 450 for the weekend that were their attendees representing approximately 16 countries. Wow. Yes. (laughs) And very impressive. I had a few gentlemen from Holland sitting in front of me, and I think a person from Korea sitting behind me. So, and a lot of the, a lot of the um, presenters, I think they said the, the presenters represented ten countries just on their own, and there were about fifty presenters. And how long is the summit? It was four days. It was four very long days. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday went from about six thirty in the morning if you wanted to get there early and, and take some workouts. They ended at five o'clock each day. No, I gotta believe if, if it's the World Golf Fitness Summit that it that the workouts are well attended. These are all fitness junkies, right? You know, it's not a fitness convention. That's funny you say that because. Well, wait a minute. Isn't it called the World Golf Fitness Summit? Yes, and golf it's not a fitness. fitness? Golf, golf fitness, fitness, meaning meaning this meaning golf is a sport. Yeah, and you have to be fit from the, from the inside out. But it doesn't mean that all of the people there were definitely workout addicts or. Or, or, and I'm not um, by no means am I implying that they weren't fit or they weren't work, they did not work out, but they were, um, you know, the vendors, the vendors that were selling some things, um, and they had some wonderful vendors, kind of gave us a demonstration each morning of what their product was and how to get a workout from it and how it could be related to the world of golf. But as far as golf fitness is concerned, for the, for the uh, for the summit, um, golf fitness can go into the medical field meaning chiropractors, massage therapists, physical therapists, um, you know, working on the spine, um, over to the, the actual golf professionals, people who teach um, the fundamentals of the, of the golf game, too. Oh, okay. So this is a TPI event, and that's Titleist Performance Institute. And we've had, um, Lynn Anderson was another TPI certified instructor that's been on our show. Um, so it's mainly just a TPI certified group. Actually, it's not. Oh boy, I'm so Actually, confused. Actually, it's not. <laughs> because, to, put, to put it simply, the, the way they, they explained it to us, the very first day is dedicated only to TPI certified people. Okay. So that was the day where um, Greg Rose and Dave Phillips and Lance Gill, who are the three founders or the, or the team of people that work together for the Titleist Performance Institute, and we've seen them regularly on the Golf Channel, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Those, those are the three you see quite often, and they are the hosts. Okay. They did a great job pretty much explaining the, the, um, the state of the union of TPI, if you will. 
the very first day, congratulating all of us, letting us know that we are in a very elite group. And TPI, which is the Institute, has come up with a very um, exclusive screening to assess people without guessing anymore, to see what is going on with their golf swing and their body. So they dedicated Thursday, the very first day of the summit, to just us. Um, And what I found out, you know what I found out, Fred, was there are 1,900 of us that are certified through Titleist across the world. Wow. Now, 400 were there. Okay. So 1,900 were are certified, and I think we represent about 31 countries. So I was I was very impressed by that. I mean, That's they're hopping impressive. and skipping and jumping all around the world um, from different countries and continents to spread the word of of TPI and their health screenings and you know how to assess people a little bit better. So what are the things over four days that are covered in the World Golf Fitness Summit? Now I'm gonna, I'm changing the way I say it. I thought it was the World Golf Fitness Summit, but now it's the World Golf Fitness Summit. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there's different. There are different tracks because the audience was so was so broad, and I sat there in some of these seminars thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is so over my head." For for example, <laughs> for example, it would be an hour and a half or an hour lecture on so, things to do correctively with the spine and and the vertebrae and the discs and. That's a little bit beyond. I mean, that's a physical therapist, chiropractor. It's a little beyond fitness. But then when I looked around and I saw golf pros, I thought, ooh, if this is beyond me, I know it's way beyond them. <laughs> you know, then I can go to another, another one that was more on the fitness and nutrition track for golfers, and it was right up my alley. And I, I, I felt great. I thought, boy, I already know this stuff. But, oh, I can see why a chiropractor beside me might be sitting in on this. Or I could see why a golf pro... Is learning so kind of what it is is if you're a, if you're a fitness person like myself, you might not go to the fitness track because you should already know it. You want to learn more about the golf swing, or you want to learn more about um, ways to work on the hip a little bit better from a from a physical therapist stand, standpoint. Something that's already needing to be corrective. Right. Um, if you're a golf pro and you know the swing and you know all the styles of the swing and you know all about 3D tech, techno stuff. You may be very curious about going to the fitness part or, you know, basic fundamentals of, of the body. So it was, it was very interesting. We got to choose our tracks. So oh, we really cool. got to pick and choose. And if I walked into a room, I thought, oh, no, this is not going to be for me. Then I could walk out and choose another one. And that was, that, was, that was probably the bonus of the weekend. Without being totally embarrassed by it. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's like, oh, look, she's leaving. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why are you leaving? Come back in here. You're supposed to. <laughs> and they weren't the least bit offended. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> they, I mean, a lot of times you had four choices. So say from wow. say from one thirty to two thirty, there were four different presenters or speakers. Maybe one was nutrition. Um, I know Dr. Robert Yang was there, and he was he was wonderful, but about some new concepts and new ideas of nutrition. But then maybe there was uh, you know Dave Phillips, who's, who's you know a golf professional talking about one plane, two plane, Mm -hmm. versus stack and tilt. Well, I would love to go see both of those. What do I do? Yeah. So that was kind of the dilemma, and they knew that, but we had to make a choice. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Well, this is really interesting, Um, and I can, you know, we've had people on before, and I I like to talk about fitness for golf, um, but I like to talk to swing mechanics, and I like to talk to chiropractic. I mean, I like to get all different aspects of it. Uh, It's interesting that they have wound these all up together um, in a teaching method. Yes. Um, and how, so how, stupid question from this part, but I'll let you play with it, how is this relevant to the average golfer? Okay, I can definitely play with that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I teed it up for you, nice thank and high. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm going to hit this one out of the park. All right. TPI takes a team approach. In fact, we are required to have a team. If we are going to be part of, of the TPI um, you know, website and uh, re- represent them, then we need to represent a team. And the average golfer should be out there. I take that back. The average golfer, it, de- it depends on what they're working on. If the golfer wants to get better, then they've got to look at all aspects of their game. You can go out there and get an instructor and pay so much money Every week, and I've, I've actually just had a client this morning who literally has the money and, and the funds for 
and um, um, an instructor every single week. Mm. He has a lesson, which means he doesn't let his fundamentals go. He wants to make sure that if he has a lesson on Monday, and if he golfs three to five days of that week and practices, that he's practicing the right thing before the, by the next Monday, so he gets better and better and better. So that's that's why we need a golf pro. Um, I mean, I've worked my way down to a 14 handicap from way up, you know, in the high 20s. But it's because I don't practice and my fundamentals aren't always great. I can't get that much lower because I need to really practice and I need to focus on having an instructor more often. Unfortunately, I'm working, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I don't have the luxury right now at my age. But then there's the person who, for example, my client today, finally came to an instructor and said, I'm not getting any better. I may be a four, you know, I may be an eight, I may be a 12. My fundamentals are great. I'm going to see a golf pro every week. You know, here's my video. Here's what my swing looks like. Why am I not getting better? And that's what I love because they, it's a blank slate, and I can take them through the TPI screening. And, you know, I've, I've gone through half the screening going, wow, this guy's perfect. This person's perfect. Wow, what's wrong with him? Is there anything wrong with him? How can I help? And then, bam, there's, there's some, some test or some assessment it's like, whoa, it just screamed out at me. You know, where I can say, you know, your left internal hip rotation is like a 20 where it should be up to about a 45. Hmm, do you happen to slide in your golf swing? And they say, yes, I do. We just, we just you know, I put my finger on the button and found out really? exactly what it was. It, it's, it's amazing, Fred. I mean, it really, really is. How often do you find in situations like this that the the culprit is lack of flexibility? Very much so. Really? It may not be. Even with somebody who's got all the fundamentals down on their swing and they can, you know, they're a four, they're a five, but they could get that much better if they worked on their body a little bit more? I would say if they're... Fu- but the bottom line is, can they get the club face square impact? <laughs> and a lot of times it really doesn't matter what the what the swing looks like anymore mm-hmm. and where they're really going into to um deciding whether the swing is efficient no matter what it looks like if it's efficient and you're you have consistent scores and you're happy with that then then you stay you don't you don't fix what's not broken right but if you start having issues where gosh I you know i got a tinge in my back or a twinge in my back or you know boy i'm, I'm getting shorter off the tee even though i'm not in pain I wonder what that's from that's where uh, where these screenings take place, and we try to figure this out. Um, well, yeah. you know, not everybody's going to swing like Tiger or Phil or Annika. Um, they're they're going to everyone's going to have an individual swing, but there are things that I guess that can be uh, worked on, can be figured out when you have that team approach that TPI demands um, that can help you assess what it is that you really should be working on, so you can be comfortable with your own swing, right? Exactly, and, mm. and I, I, I'm, I'm glad that TPI and more, and more people are becoming TPI certified so we can get a, a very good team. Um, again, for example, the person that came to me today came from a golf professional, golf um, teacher that knew about me and knew about my, my screenings. So I screened the gentleman this morning. He really wasn't in any pain. Now, had he been in pain, for example, if his low back really hurt and his hip was really super tight, and if I couldn't help him, I would then refer him to rehabilitation or a physical therapist or, heck, even a chiropractor because it's a little bit beyond just fitness. He needs some serious corrective exercises. So, so that's how we all work together, something medical. And it may, be, it's, you know, it may be even just a massage. And I talk to some of my clients and I say, have you ever had a massage before? Because you are so, not necessarily that they're tight, but they're wound up. Yeah. But a knot. Yeah. It, you can't stretch a knot. <laughs> Are you, you know? offering, if you're offering a massage, I'm ready for one right now. <laughs> I could probably find someone. That's not my scope of practice. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, see, that's the team approach. <laughs> that's right. It's a team approach. Yeah, nice passing of the buck. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I know my scope of practice. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'm not telling um, Dr. Rose and, and Dave Phillips and Lance, I'm not telling them you know, how to do their thing. Obviously, they've got it figured out and they've got a, a large group of people who are ascribing to their thing. But what about the mental aspect of the game? Is that not covered in TPI? 
You know, I wrote a summary or an evaluation of the summit this year. That's the one thing I didn't see, and I was shocked. And a few of my other colleagues that were there that, that stayed with me said, said the same thing, that, you know, we really didn't hear much about the mental game. Mm. Um, no, I take that back because I know that, that Lynn Marriott and Pia Nielsen from Vision 54 are sure. very much into the mental part. Oh, my gosh, yes. They've both been on the program. Right. They've both and, been and on the And I didn't smarter. see them, um, but I think they talked about some other things, too. But I, I have a feeling by next year, because you can only fit so much in, yeah. that um, th- there will be some strategies, um, some different different approaches to calming someone. Um, you know, I, I, they, they touched on it from a fitness standpoint. They touched on it from a mind-body connection, meaning can you focus on your breathing? Breath was huge this year. Mm. Every single person seemed to talk about relaxing your body, um, curing your body, getting more oxygen in by just really focusing on your breath wow. and, and being more self-aware of what's going on inside your body. But they didn't have a sports psychologist there. There was not a psychiatrist there saying, these are my strategies when it just gets so deep that someone has um, oh, uh, a yip, a putting yip, sure. or a sipping yip. Sure. You know, what do you do when there's a yip? And I, I, I can't say that I, that I saw that. Or just beating yourself up after a bad shot or walking up to a hole knowing that you've had trouble with that hole in the past and, and letting that control your, your thoughts. Um, I also want to want to mention, um, you know, you talked about Pia Nilsson and, and Lynn Marriott of Vision 54, and uh, they have both been on the Golf Smarter podcast, and I highly recommend, and that's what I love about podcasts, if you've not heard those episodes, uh, you should definitely go back and listen, because those were great, and not because of what I had anything to do with, but just the content that they delivered was really fabulous. Right. Well, and you know who else I really like is Joe Parent. Oh, Dr. Joe. Yes, Dr. Joe. Absolutely. Zen Golf. He's been on four times, actually. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Great book. Big fan of his. Big fan of his. Maybe we'll see him there next year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or Michael Anthony, who uh, who does Mm -hmm. uh, our Golf Smarter Tips. He's our mental guru for that. Or Dr. Bob Winters of, uh, well, I don't know if he would because he's part of Ledbetter. And he's going to be on again soon, too. He's been on before. Now, what about nutrition? How much was covered in nutrition in a round of golf uh, during the World Golf Fitness Summit? Uh, a lot, actually, and, and, and a lot for not just on the golf course, but off the golf course as well, because I mean, we live in a country right now <laughs> that people just quite aren't, aren't quite getting it, and there's enough information out there that they should. Um, we're, we're not even a mediocre country as far as our eating. It, it's just plain bad. You know, mm. stereotypically, it really is. Then there are the people that kind of, I hate to say go off the deep end, of, <laughs> but really go so far to organic and certain vitamins and minerals and supplements. And, you know, we're, we're, where's the happy medium, too? Right. So uh, there were, we, we stayed one night, was it Friday or Saturday? We stayed one night and where everything ended at 5, and I think we had a, had a nutrition Q&A panel that went on for probably another hour, hour and 15 minutes with four great, I um, think one dietitian, nutritionist, um, doctors, that a couple of them had their own books, maybe their own um, supplements as well, that really talked about where nutrition is going um, as far as the golfer is concerned. Yeah, let's talk about, let's focus back to the golfer here and a round of golf. Because um, I, I, I think that, you know, I mean, I appreciate that they have a, uh, you know, a snack shack at the, at the turn and you can grab a hot dog, but I think it's terrible. It is. <laughs> I, 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 I know that when I was eating at the turn and, you know, shoving something down my f- face um, or my pie hole, shoving something in my pie hole uh, at the turn, that the next three or four holes I would just collapse. Yeah. And that since I've been doing this uh, sip and nibble routine, which is I just have a three-ounce bag of nuts that gets me through an entire round and a, two, one or two bottles of water and just a little bit after every other shot or every shot, I'm just so much more consistent and the wheels don't fall off the wagon. Well, it's because you're eating consistently and you're drinking consistently instead of a big rush of sugar and then a big drop of sugar, too. Yeah. Um, if, if, if your listeners get a chance, they can check out my website, which I'm sure we'll talk about soon. I just wrote an article um, just getting into our golf season down here in Arizona 
on how to be prepared. And really, that's the key word, is preparation. Yeah. But showing up at a golf course and not having a thing in your bag is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I've probably done it twice in the last five years, and I've been so mad at myself because mm-hmm. I think, oh, my gosh, I'm so hungry. Um, but you really do have to be prepared. You have to get, at, whether you're at a private course or not, and they don't want you to, if they aren't going to supply you on that beverage cart with something healthy, <laughs> then, you, then you, you have no choice but to take your own goodies. Oh, I know. And, they have, and the, those, those carts that drive around mostly have candy bars, and that's not going to help. You know, there were some occasionally the power bars or the you know those um, energy bars, but those not not even those for many. Yeah, um, I would say candy. the peanuts, nuts because it won't spike the blood sugar. Right, I'm, usually I'm, have some planters peanuts there. They certainly cash. aren't great. Yeah, but if it's a Smart hot bag. hotter climate, they're probably salted. Um, but then people be- take that bag, right, that little ounce and a half bag, and they just go. Whoop! And they, oh, it is gone. It's, it wasn't like, oh, I'm still hungry. No, no, no. You just have a nut. Just take it. <laughs> you need to ration it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, like you said, um, you know, having having a handful and putting it back in your bag and then, you know, walking to the next. Hopefully they're walking. They're supposed to be walking. Supposed to be walking. I mean, what, yeah, walking to the next shot and maybe having. What, what I like to do is I like to eat before I go to the golf course. Now, mm-hmm. I'm teeing off at 7 a.m. or heck, even 6.30 this summer. That's a little early for me to eat, but by hole two, I'm eating a bar because I'm hungry. Because mm-hmm. I just haven't started my day yet as far as digestion. Um, but I would say not to go more than three holes without putting something in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Now, it doesn't mean each time you eat a whole bar, but even just a bite, and then you, you, know, you go on to your next shot. Mm-hmm. Same thing with water. You know, if you tee off, you, grab, you take a swig of water. Um, you know, middle of the fairway, take a swig of water. On the green, take a swig of water. Go to the next hole. Okay, and I'll admit it. I actually, at the turn, I've I've added something to my my diet. On <laughs> at the turn, as I've also been bringing a banana with me, and just I'll eat, and that'll take three holes to, to eat the banana. Too. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but I'll just take now that ha- that does have a high sugar. Mm-hmm. It means it may affect some people differently than others. You know, so so say say you had your banana, and maybe you have it on the first hole. If by the third hole you're starting to get a little shaky then your body's already looking for something else to eat. Yeah. So the glycemic index of a banana is pretty high. So a banana with, again, a handful of nuts would pretty, I call it neutralize it, would kind of bring it down a little bit so it lasts longer. But if you don't have a problem and you've never seen a difference, you know, w- with that, then, then heck, your body was ready for it at the turn, you know. Mm-hmm. I, um, I had one of my clients, uh, actually he played the mini tour. He was a gateway player about four years ago that was eating zone bars. Now, I don't know if you know much about zone bars, but no. this, it, it kind of goes with the ignorance of, of, of America. Is we, we, see, we read the wrappers, we read the front of the wrappers, and we read the signs, and we think, oh, good, this is perfect. But a very high glycemic index, which means there's very little protein, there's very little fiber to stop the digestion of the bar. So he was getting shaky, and he'd go out to a gateway tour event, and I don't know if you know much about many tour players, but <laughs> they're paying to be on the tour, Therefore, not only are they paying to be on a tour, they're hoping to get paid. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, they've got to really think about what they're doing. But he would just be shaking and shaking and shaking. So we had it down to a science where we lined up in the front of the golf cart. Uh, they, they play with golf carts here because of the summertime yeah. um, tor- tournaments. Uh, a cheese stick, hmm. um, nuts, a, a half of a zone bar. He wasn't allowed to eat the whole thing, but that he really liked the zone bars. And then he would just go back and forth with that cheese stick um, and maybe an apple because it has more fiber. Okay. But any, anything that's more um, natural, more mm. to earth, more that's not processed right. is what we're trying to get people to have, trail mix. Um, we had uh, Susan Hill on the show um, not long ago, and she said her favorite food was peanut butter pretzels. Oh, yum. Yeah, I've, and I found them, too. I mean, I went looking, and peanut butter pretzels, because it's got almost everything combined in one little bite. Perfect. Yeah. That's great, because you got a little fat, you got a little protein, you got a little sugar. There you go. Heck, and you have salt, so that's even And you better. have the salt, too. Right, 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 right. Is, now, we, we're not saying that golf is an aerobic sport, but walking is good for you, and it's a four or five-mile walk. That's a great thing that you can do. 
Um, I mean, because you know, doctors tell you if you if you get a thirty to forty minute walk in every day, that's that's great exercise. That that helps. Right. Um, but when you're warming up for your your round of golf and you're doing some stretching and stuff, do you need to get yourself up to a sweat? How, how do you need to warm up for golf with golf stretches, or how much stretching and warming up? not hitting balls, but stretching your body and your back and your hips and things like that. How much do you need to do for that before a round of golf? I'm going to take the the approach that it depends on the golfer. Now, many would say it's it's just a blanket. Oh gosh, you definitely have to be very flexible and you have to be stretch you have to stretch before, you know, especially in the morning when you wake up. But if you're a flexible person already and you're o- almost hypermobile, you may not need to stretch at all because it really could, really could mess up your swing. So it kind of depends on who you are. On, on the safe side, <laughs> going with most of America and not talking about the pros, um, that most amateurs, I would say that you know, right, at, right when, you're, when you're talking to your buddies at the uh, driving range, you know, take a golf club and do a series of dynamic stretches. You don't need to sit on the ground and try to get your legs in a split or anything like that, but you need to get some blood flowing. Um, and, and emulating the golf swing, even though it's the two or three clubs I've seen people grab for weight. weight. Um, but but you definitely need to get some stretches going. Even the first tee, same thing. You're waiting for the people in front of you to tee off. You know, grab a club, do some motions with your spine that you'll be doing for the next at least 72 times. <laughs> Chances are. I'm so glad that you mentioned having to do dynamic stretches not only before, but during your round of golf. If you could please give us one or two so that we know what you're talking about, and I will do it along with you while you're saying it. Okay, so you want me to describe a couple dynamic stretches. If you could. I golfed yesterday, so let me think. Okay, if you have your golf club. I do. You're going to hold your left hand on the hosel. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> which, is, which is down there by the club head. Mm-hmm. And you're going to hold your right hand on the grip. So it's holding, you're holding it right out in front of you. Okay, so with palms down? Palms down, and it's parallel to the floor. Okay, good. And all I'm going to have you do, instead of doing a golf swing, or more like a Ferris wheel, I'm going to have you be a merry-go-round. And you're going to go right and left. Okay. So, to, now to warm, keeping your chest high, keeping your chin up as if someone's pulling the top of your head to the sky. You're going to try to lift through your spine because if you were walking on the golf course or you're getting ready to walk on the golf course, you compress your spine, which can lead to back pain. So keep rotating, inhale one direction, exhale the other. And this is not a jerky motion. This is a slow... Right, very symmetrical, very mm-hmm. symmetrical. So if you're a right-handed golfer... Don't go slow to the right and then fast to the left. It's not like a golf swing, yeah. Exactly. So just and then you can lift up one heel and then the other. So if you're rotating to the right, go ahead and lift up that left heel and see how far you can turn around. I mean, so the opposite heel, the opposite uh, foot gets lifted from the direction you're turning. Yes. Okay. And you should be able to go 180 degrees. You should be able to go from the golf club being parallel in the front of your body, to parallel in the back of your body. And if you can't? Mm, then, well, I, I'm saying you can do that if you lift up your trail heel. Mm, if okay. You can't, if you can't, then it could be quad tightness, mm-hmm. hip tightness, could be your lats on the side, could be uh, your left obliques if you're turning to the right, could be your shoulder turn isn't as far. So you really want all of those working together. That's what incorporates club head speed, and you want to keep your club head speed up, right? So you want... All those body parts working together. Okay. Your hips. Very good. Or so your arms to the club. Very good. Um, also, you you have uh, when you sign up for your emails, you send out videos that you have on various websites, uh, including tees 2 greens dot com, and it's the number two tees 2 greens dot com. Your your video instruction on on your exercises can be found there, right? Yes, and I, there is actually one of them on tees 2 greens and. On my website, Fit for Golf USA, that is titled Merry Go Round, which is the one I just told you about. Okay, very good. All right, and the, your website again is fitforgolfusa.com, and it is not the number four, it is the word F O R. Exactly. Fit, 
F-I-T, for golfusa.com. Good. And um, all right, so uh, is let me ask you, is like lower back pain associated um, that golfers experience, is that ex- associated with tight hamstrings often yeah. or... Where where does that come from, or is it just from the it comes the swing? in with a low back problem to me? First of all, have them try to touch the toes. Mm-hmm. If they can touch their toes, then their hamstrings are not tight. Okay, if they can't, it could be um, a, a cause that their hamstrings are tight. Also, I look at their hip flexors and they're tight in the in the front of the body, which go across the hips. Mm-hmm. That could also be tight. The other part of it is that their hips may not be as mobile as they need to be. People who have tight hips will try to rotate in their low back. Mm. That's one of the number one problems with golfers. If their hips are so tight that they cannot rotate through the hips, you know, that means they have to sway or they have to slide, their lumbar spine will want to torque and turn, turn, which will lead, more times than not, to a herniation or a bulging disc. Interesting. Well, Mindy Boyson, you are just a wealth of information. Thank you so much for for coming on to the Golf Smarter Podcast and sharing uh, your experience at the World Golf Fitness Summit, as well as talking about your website, again, fitforgolfusa.com. And you have some DVDs that you uh, sell on your website. They're Fit for Golf, Fit for Life, and uh, three different ones. One is golf-related, one is using the heavy ball, and the other one with the big ball, right? Exactly, right. Well, best of luck to you. Thanks again for coming on, and uh, we hope we can have you back on again talk some more about this. Thanks, Fred. I, I appreciate it. 